Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks. And in the last video, we looked at how to use PayPal version two in order to set up a product purchase. And we saw that one of the limitations was that people had to click on the PayPal button and then be able to see that they could pay with a credit card. So if we use PayPal version one, what we can actually do is we can set up a section where somebody can pay with, in my case, Stripe or whatever payment gateway you want to use. And in a lower section, you can tell them that they can use that to purchase with PayPal. So right on the screen, you give somebody the choice of being able to pay with their credit card through something like Stripe and then also being able to pay with PayPal. So the very first thing we want to do is we want to set up a product for our Stripe version of the purchase. So I already have one set up here. Let's just click on edit and see what we have inside. And we're going to want the information in here to be the same as what we put into our PayPal version. So we have this one. We're going to call this our Stripe product. Our integration here is going to be Stripe. I have a 9.95 price US dollars and my override I'm going to have free plus shipping and in order to get it to save you always have to put in a product description just for credit card purposes. So we can save that but it's already saved so we'll back out. Now the next thing we need to do is set up our PayPal product so we'll click on settings and as we scroll down the page we're going to want to stop where it says test mode and we're going to make sure we have our test mode turned on because we're going to want to test this once we're done. And then we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom where it says third party membership access. And I already have one set up, but I'm going to click on add product just to show you how to do it. It's really basically the same as how we set up Stripe. So let's just give this one a name. I'm going to delete this one out so we can call it whatever we want. Click on our PayPal integration. We want our $9.95 because that's what we have set up for the Stripe product. And again, this is exactly the same product, just a different way to pay for it. And then we're going to have our price override like before, free plus shipping. Now here's the only difference. We need to put in a cart product number or ID, and we're going to use that later when we get into PayPal. So in this case here, let's just say one, two, three, four, five, and we're going to click on create the product. Well, I already have my product done, so let's just go into that product and take a look at it. And we have our PayPal product, PayPal, $9.95, USD, free plus shipping, product number 123. So we already have this saved. So again, we can back out of this. And now the next step we want to go to is we want to go into our PayPal account and log in. Now, just like in PayPal version one, you're going to need a business account in order to set this up, but you're going to come into your account. You're going to click on tools and then all tools. You're going to scroll down to where it says PayPal buttons and click on buy now. And now you're going to give it a name and I'm just going to call this test one because we're going to go back and use one I've already done before. And we're going to just say one, two, three, four, five. We have our price of nine ninety five. You're going to scroll down. Chances are you're probably not going to do anything else here until you get down to step number three. In step number three, you're going to check both of these boxes and then you're going to say, where do you want the customer to go if they cancel their checkout? Now, normally this is going to be back to the page that they were previously on because what will happen is when they click on the PayPal button, it'll open it up in a new page. Unlike version two, where there was just a pop up on the screen here, it does a full screen. So if they cancel for some reason, you want them to go back to the page that they had previously been on. And then where do you want them to go after they check out, which is normally going to be the next step in the funnel, which could be another upsell, a downsell, a thank you page, membership site, whatever that would be. So in order to get these addresses, we're going to go back into our funnel. And here's the page that we're going to have our order form on. So we're going to click on that and we're going to grab the URL. So let's just grab this URL. Come in, we're going to paste this in. And then where do we want them to go next? We want them to go to the next page, which is an upsell page. Copy that out and paste it in. Now we got one thing left to do. We'll check on this box and then you come over here and here's an example. We want to just grab where it says here, notify URL equals, notify underscore URL 
equals. And we're going to come back into our funnel. We're going to go back to our settings. So of course you can copy this out ahead of time. I just hadn't copied it out. And we're going to go all the way back down to the bottom. We're going to go back down to our product. Click on edit. And right here, there's a webhook URL. And although you can see the, the little slash that says it's not, uh, you can't do anything with it, actually you can. So just come in here and just copy out this whole line. Click copy, and now we just paste it at the end. And that's it. Now this URL right here is good for any step in this funnel, but it cannot be used for other funnels. So you could have 15 different PayPal products in this funnel. It would all have exactly the same webhook URL at the bottom. So now let's click on create the button and you get two different snippets of code. One is if you're going to put it inside of a web page, and we're going to show you how to do that in a second. And then one is if you want to put it into an email, but you can also use this as a link inside of a button. So we're going to set up both of those. So let's go back into ClickFunnels and I have a page open that's actually, let me show you, that's actually this page right here, our test PayPal version one order form page. I have it open right here. And so all I did is just something very, very simple. I'm just so this upper part is where you're going to have somebody buy with Stripe. I put in an order selector at the top, credit card, and then order summary with a button. And the button is set to submit the page. Now in the lower part, we have buy with PayPal version one. Again, put in any text, stylize everything the way you want, of course. And now we're going to go to our custom JavaScript HTML box, which I dropped in here. And we're going to open it up. And here is the code. This part up here, ignore this little bit at the bottom here for right now. Just this part here, what that code is, is this code right here. Under website is this code right here. Now, this is a different funnel than this one because this is just a test funnel we just set up. Uh, but this is a different funnel, but it's going to basically be exactly the same form, except the value here is going to change. But um, so you grab that information here and you would put it into your custom JavaScript box. Now there's a second way of setting this up, and that is to come into our, our button that I put down at the bottom. We're going to go to set action. And right here, we're going to grab that email. Like I said, this can go into an email or it can go into a button. You can put this into a link. You could do a lot of different things. You could even, I guess, uh, you could even put this into a navigation element if you wanted to. So you put all this in here, you copy it out, and put it right into here for where we want this to go to. Um, or the action we want it to take once you click on this button. So we're going to save this. Now there's one thing that we have to do before we go any further, and that is we got to come back into PayPal. And first off, I had said earlier that this was not the actual button. We're going to go to my saved buttons, and we're going to look at the button I had saved earlier. We're going to edit the button. And we're going to have a PayPal V1 test. And here we go, product number 123. Remember, that is the product that we put in for our actual test account for our PayPal. So the cart product code that we put in here is the number that goes in here into the item ID. Again, we have price of $9.95, US dollars, all matching what we have over here. And then again, we'll scroll down to the bottom and we put in the link back to our order form page and the link to the next page in the funnel that we want them to go to, which was our upsell page. And then we got our web hook down at the bottom. And if we click on save changes, you'll see again, we have our website code and our email code. So this is the actual one that we're working on, not the test one. So what I like to do to test when we're dealing with payment processors, with PayPal, and doing any kind of purchases in test mode, what I like to do is come back to where the URL of the page is, not the preview URL that you would get if you were to click preview right here. I want to come back here and use the actual URL. I want to right click and I want to open the link in incognito window. 
So here we are inside our incognito mode in test mode. So we have a credit card up here at the top that we can use for testing purposes. We can put that in. We can put in any CVC number and we can pick any date out into the future. And when we click to sign up, it will purchase the product and send us to the next page in the funnel. But what we want to look at here is our PayPal version one. So like I said, we have our two different buttons. The first one was the uh, HTML Java code box that we put in here. And that's the big long code that we put into it. And then down here below was just where we put in the link. And you're noticing this is off to the side. I'll show you some code in a second that'll put it right here in the middle. So you only put in one of these. You can decide which one do you want. Do you want to buy now with, uh, with this button or do you want to create your own button for purposes of buying? I think creating your own button looks better, but let's click on this button and see what happens. So it opens it up in the same tab and you have a choice of being able to log into your PayPal account or if you want to purchase as a guest, you can put in your credit card information, your billing address, all this and just click on pay now and it will charge their credit card or we can back out of this. And we can click on the button and come to exactly the same page. If you click on log in, you'll have the ability to put in your username and password and log in. And it gives me an error because I'm trying to purchase something out of my own PayPal account. But obviously anybody who's not trying to purchase their own product, they'll be just fine. And again, you see down here at the bottom that if somebody were to default back out to this page, they could pay with their debit or their credit card. And now before I forget, I promised that I'd show how to center that button on your page. So come back down to your custom JavaScript HTML box, open this up. And all you want to do is just grab this code here. This was just there to remark it out or make it a comment. So you're going to just grab this and say style equals in quotes, text dash align colon center. So text align center is what our style is going to be. We're going to copy that and right up here between form and action, we would want to paste that in. So it'll look just like this. And of course, you're not going to have this down below. So now let's save this. And in this case here, I'm going to click preview because we're not going to do anything except to see how it looks on the page. And there it is, it's perfectly centered in the page. Now, one last point, you might be asking yourself, what if I don't have a one-time purchase? What if I have a subscription? How do I set that up? Well, again, we'll go back into PayPal, back under tools, all tools, and then we'll come down to PayPal buttons. And instead of clicking on buy now, we're going to click on subscribe. It will show subscription here instead of buy now. You'll put in the name of your item just like before and your subscription ID, which again will be the ID from your cart product right here. Just put that in, fill out everything else exactly the same as you would have put in your URLs to where people are going to go to, put in your notify URL equals with the web hook afterwards and create your button. And one last note about version one it says right here in the help docs that PayPal does not support one click upsells or one time offers OTOs. So you can't use those. All you can use this on is a regular order form. Once somebody's done with their purchase, do not send them to an order confirmation page because in that type of page is going to want to populate what they just bought. And because they're coming back from PayPal, it won't know what to populate. So you can send them to a thank you page. You can send them to another sales page. You can send them to a lot of different places. Uh, just don't send them to a confirmation page. And then the last thing down here talks about testing. If you're going to test, they're suggesting that you do it through somebody else's PayPal account. As you saw, what the problem was at the very end is it gave us that error because I was trying to test inside of my own PayPal account. So they're suggesting that you set your price at $1.00 and then you go into somebody else's PayPal account, or maybe you have a personal PayPal account along with your business PayPal account, you go in there and you test it that way by buying a $1 product just to make sure that it works. 
So that is it for this episode. We walked through how to set up a funnel using PayPal version one, where you can give someone two options to buy with a payment merchant of your choice. Mine is Stripe and also PayPal version one on the same page. If you have any questions on this, reach out to ClickFunnels support and I'll see you in the next video.